Every runner knows the feeling. You wake up one morning with a scratchy throat. Or you twist your ankle stepping off a curb. Or maybe life just happens. A massive project at work. A family emergency. A two-week vacation where you promised your partner you wouldn't pack your running shoes. The first day you miss training, you feel guilty. The third day, you feel anxious. By the seventh day, you are convinced that all your hard work has evaporated. You look in the mirror and think your muscles are shrinking. You look at your watch and imagine your VO2 max plummeting into the abyss. You feel like if you try to run tomorrow, you will be back to square one, gasping for air like a beginner. This psychological spiral is what we call the fear of detraining. And for most of us, it is more painful than the injury or the illness itself. But here's the question. Is this fear based on reality? Or is it just paranoia? Does your fitness actually disappear that fast? What exactly happens inside your body, to your blood, your heart, your mitochondria, and your muscles, when you stop running for a week, or two weeks, or a month? Today, we are going to look at the hard science of detraining. I am going to show you exactly what your physiology is doing during a break. And the answer might surprise you, because the science says that your body is far more resilient than your mind thinks it is. If you are currently injured, sick, or just taking a break, put down the guilt and watch this. This is the roadmap to your comeback. The first 72 hours, the false drop. Let's start with the immediate aftermath. You stop running, 24 hours pass, 48 hours pass. You might step on the scale and see that you have lost a kilogram. You might look at your legs and feel they look flat or smaller. Panic sets in. I'm losing muscle, you think. Relax. You are not losing muscle. You are not losing fitness. What you are experiencing in the first three days is a drop in blood plasma volume and glycogen. When you train regularly, your body hypercompensates. It stores extra water in your blood, plasma, to help with cooling and circulation. It stores extra glycogen, sugar in your muscles for fuel. Every gram of glycogen holds about three to four grams of water. This is why runners often look full and vascular. When you stop training, the body says, I don't need to carry this heavy water anymore. So you pee it out. Your blood volume drops by about five to 10%. Your muscles shed the water weight. That flat look, that's just dehydration. It is cosmetic. Your heart is still strong. Your mitochondria are still there. Your capillaries haven't gone anywhere. In fact, physiologically, these first few days are often beneficial. This is the taper effect. Your hormonal profile is switching from catabolic, breakdown, to anabolic, repair. Your cortisol is dropping. Your testosterone is rebounding. So if you miss three days, you haven't lost fitness. You have just rested. You are likely faster today than you were three days ago. The seven to 14 day window, the first real changes. Now, the news gets a little worse before it gets better. But stick with me through the hard part because at the end of this timeline, I'm going to reveal a biological backup system that literally saves your career. Let's move to the danger zone. The break extends past a week. We are getting into the 10 to 14 day range. This is where the first real physiological adaptations to inactivity begin. But they are specific and they are reversible. The first system to take a hit is the cardiovascular system. Remember that drop in blood plasma we talked about? By day 10, it becomes significant. Because you have less blood volume circulating, your heart has to pump faster to deliver the same amount of oxygen. This means your stroke volume, the amount of blood ejected per beat, decreases. To compensate, your heart rate increases. If you go for a run on day 14, you will notice that your easy pace heart rate is 5 to 10 beats higher than normal. You will think, oh no, I'm out of shape. Technically, yes, your cardiac efficiency has dropped slightly. But here is the crucial scientific nuance. Your metabolic engine is still intact. Studies show that VO2 max, your maximum aerobic capacity, 
drops by about 4 to 6% after two weeks of total inactivity. 4 to 6%. That's it. It's not 50%. It's not 20%. It's a tiny fraction. Spoiler alert, it sounds scary, but you can stop almost all of this drop with just 20 minutes of specific work a week. I'll explain exactly how in a minute. But first, let's look at the muscles. Most importantly, your lactate threshold, the point where you redline, remains surprisingly stable during this period. So while the delivery system, the blood and heart pump, has gotten a bit lazy, the combustion engine, the muscle's ability to use oxygen, hasn't forgotten how to run. This is why the comeback from a two-week break is so fast. You just need to rebuild the blood volume, which happens within a few sessions. The 30-day mark, mitochondrial decay versus muscle memory. Now we enter the scary territory, a month off. Maybe it's a stress fracture, maybe it's a long illness. What happens after four weeks of sitting on the couch? This is where we see changes at the cellular level. We start to see a decrease in mitochondrial density. Mitochondria are the power plants in your cells. They turn fat and sugar into energy. Training builds more of them. Inactivity kills them off. We also see a reduction in oxidative enzymes. These are the chemical workers that facilitate energy production. After 30 days, your VO2 max might be down by 10 to 15%. Your ability to burn fat efficiently has decreased. You are now more reliant on sugar, glycolysis, which means you produce lactate sooner. When you run after a month off, you will feel the burn in your legs much faster. The endurance feels gone. However, there is good news, and this is the part that most runners don't know. We used to think that when muscles shrink atrophy, the adaptations are lost forever. New research in the last decade has discovered the concept of myonuclei permanence, often called muscle memory. When you train hard, your muscle fibers acquire new nuclei control centers to handle the load. When you stop training, the muscle fiber might shrink in size, but the nuclei stay there. They don't disappear, they go dormant, they are like sleeper cells waiting. This is why retraining is so much faster than initial training. It might have taken you two years to build your fitness from zero, but to regain that same fitness after a month off? It won't take two years, it won't even take two months. Because the infrastructure, the nuclei, is already inside the muscle, waiting for the signal to wake up. Practical application. How to mitigate the loss. So we know the science, but we are runners, not lab rats. We want to know, what do I do? How do we stop this slide? Or if we can't stop it, how do we minimize it? Here is the golden rule of maintenance. Intensity trumps volume. If you are injured and can't run, but you can cross train, bike, swim, elliptical, listen carefully. Most injured runners make the mistake of trying to replicate their long runs on the bike. They pedal slowly for two hours watching Netflix. This is almost useless for preventing detraining. Remember, the first thing you lose is blood volume and stroke volume. To keep those high, you need to spike your heart rate. You need intensity. You are better off doing a 20-minute high-intensity interval hit session on the bike than a two-hour slow ride. Why? Because the high heart rate spikes signal the body to keep the plasma volume high shocks the heart into maintaining its stroke volume. If you can only train once a week due to a busy schedule, make that one run intense. A tempo run or a threshold session will preserve your VO2 max far better than a slow jog. Science has shown that you can maintain almost all your fitness with just 30% of your normal volume, as long as the intensity remains high. So if you are forced to cut back, Cut the junk miles. Cut the warm-ups. Keep the hard stuff. The comeback strategy, don't be a hero. Now, let's talk about the return. You've been off for three weeks. You are cleared to run. Listen to me closely. I have seen athletes ruin six months of progress in their first week back. 
Not because they were weak, but because they were greedy. Don't be that athlete. What is the biggest mistake everyone makes? They try to make up for lost time. They look at their training log, see all those zeros, and panic. They try to jump right back into their old pace. This is suicide. Remember, one, your musculoskeletal system, tendons, bones, ligaments, has weakened faster than your heart. Your engine might still have horsepower, but your chassis is rusty. If you push the engine, the chassis will break. This is why re-injury rates are so high in the first month back. Two, your glycogen stores are low, you will run out of fuel faster. The rule of return, for every week you took off, give yourself one week of easy running before you introduce speed. Off for one week? One week of just easy runs, then tempo. Off for three weeks? Three weeks of easy base building, then tempo. Do not look at your pace. Your pace will be slow, your heart rate will be high. Accept it. Hide your pace on your watch, run by effort. If you fight the physiology, you will create a stress response, cortisol, that will actually suppress your recovery. If you accept the physiology and run slow, you allow the blood volume to rebound naturally. Within three to four runs, you will see your heart rate drop by five to 10 beats as the plasma returns. It happens that fast. Beyond the physical, the mental game. The hardest part of detraining isn't the mitochondria, it's the mind, it's the identity crisis. I used to be a runner. We attach our self-worth to our Strava stats. When the stats disappear, we feel empty. But here is a perspective shift. Elite athletes take breaks on purpose. It's called the off-season. Kipchoge takes weeks off. Olympic champions take a month off where they barely jog. Why? Because they know that biological systems cannot be on 12 months a year. Detraining is actually a form of resensitization. When you train non-stop for years, your body gets stubborn. It stops adapting. You hit a plateau. A period of detraining clears the slate. It clears the accumulated fatigue. It heals the micro tears you didn't even know you had. It restores hormonal balance. When you come back, yes, you are slower for a month, but your body is fresh. It is sensitive to the stimulus again. Many athletes hit their lifetime personal best three to four months after a forced break because they finally gave their body the deep rest it was screaming for. So do not view this break as a loss. View it as a strategic reset. You are not falling behind. You are pulling back the arrow on the bow to shoot it further. The deep dive. We have covered the basics here, but if you want the specific nutrition protocols to prevent atrophy while injured, or the exact blood markers to track during recovery, check out the exclusive membership channel. It is the advanced operating manual for your body that goes beyond YouTube. Link in description. Closing and call to action. So to summarize, if you missed a week, you lost nothing. You just rested. If you missed two weeks, you lost some blood volume. It comes back in three runs. If you missed a month, you lost some mitochondrial density, but your muscle memory is safe. The only thing that can truly destroy your fitness is quitting. The only thing that can make this break permanent is if you let the frustration win. If you are coming back from a break right now, I have a challenge for you. Tomorrow, put on your shoes. Go out for 20 minutes. Don't look at the pace. Don't look at the heart rate. Just run. Remind your body what it feels like. Wake up those nuclei, but be smart. The road back is tricky. You need to balance the urge to push with the need to protect your tissues. If you are unsure how to structure your comeback, if you don't know how much is too much, if you are terrified of getting injured again, then maybe you shouldn't do it alone. As a coach, a huge part of my job is managing the return to play. It's easy to coach someone who is fit. It's an art to coach someone back to fitness safely. I build plans that bridge the gap between where you were and where you are, ensuring you get back to your peak without breaking down again. If you want guidance on your comeback journey, my contact details are in the description and the pinned comment. Send me a message. Let's build a plan that respects your physiology and gets you back to the start line stronger than before. Welcome back.
Send me an email now at jimkuriak at gmail.com with the subject training plan or send a message on WhatsApp or Viber. Running Coach Demetrius MSc in Sports Science. Your running journey powered by science.